It's Dr. Ed Bush with the LSU Ag Center. And I'm Dr. Kiki Fontenot, also with the LSU Ag Center. And today we're going to talk about planting citrus in containers for all your needs, especially in north and central Louisiana where it gets cold. When selecting citrus trees, there's a lot of things to think about. First, citrus aren't very cold hardy trees. So normally you're going to grow them in zones 8 and 9, but they do much better in 9 or along coastal Louisiana where we plant them in the ground. However, even in southern portions of Louisiana, some of our less cold hardy citrus trees um, need to be planted in containers. This is especially true if you live in central and north Louisiana. So when we're thinking about cold hardiness on our citrus trees, the different types of citrus have more or less cold hardiness to them. Starting with the least is going to be the lime tree, which is not cold hardy at all. This would probably be good in a container in all areas of Louisiana. Followed by the lemon tree. With the lemon tree, the only lemon variety that we really um, promote here in Louisiana is Meyer or improved Meyer lemon trees because they have some degree of cold hardiness but still will not tolerate freezing temperatures. None of these types of citrus like freezing temperatures. The grapefruits and the navel trees are gonna be the mid-range cold hardiness, followed by satsumas. I like the fact that satsumas are a little bit more cold hardy here in Louisiana because that's probably the number one citrus that we're known for growing here in our state. Finally, kumquats over here are gonna be our most cold hardy of all the citrus trees. Uh, so you could plant those in the ground in South Louisiana, but really still in a container in Central and North Louisiana. When selecting for your citrus trees at the nursery, you're also going to want to look for a nice straight trunk. So we really want one long trunk. We don't want things that are forked down low because we're going to train this tree to have a trunk that is straight and then we're going to assume that it, we're going to start branches about three or four feet up off the top of the of the ground level. When you're looking at young citrus in the containers at the nursery, you'll notice that a lot of the lemons and grapefruit will have thorns on them, so be careful for that. Um, this tree will grow out of that as it gets older, but you're gonna notice some thorns on it right there. The other thing you wanna look for when you're buying trees at the nursery, uh, flowers are okay, you know, but we're really gonna knock that off, especially this kumquat right here. You see fruit that's already developed on it. We're gonna go ahead once we get that home and knock all that fruit off. And I know that's really hard to hear. And everybody wants the, the fruit tree with the fruit already on it. But we really want for our first year or two years, once you get it to your house, this, this tree is probably a year old already in this pot. We really wanna knock all fruit off for those first two years at the house so that we can really focus the plant on growing roots and, and establishment of, of foliage and that kind of thing. And then later on, it can focus on fruit production because if it starts focusing on fruit production too early, that's what the tree's gonna concentrate on and you're gonna have a weaker root system, a weaker plant that's gonna be more susceptible to cold damage, insect damage, and disease damage. Citrus trees in Louisiana are all grafted. So when you're selecting a tree, you wanna make sure that you have a nice graft line between the rootstock and the top of the tree. So the rootstocks in Louisiana are mostly gonna be trifoliata, and this is a, a good rootstock that's decently hardy in cold weather, but also resistant to some of the diseases and soil borne problems we have here in Louisiana. The reason why we have to graft is because trifoliata makes tiny, small citrus fruit that are very sour, full of seeds, and don't taste good at all. So you can see right here, we have a nice graft line. When we're protecting our trees, we wanna really make sure that we protect this area between here, the graft of this tree. So when we're selecting it, we're first looking for a nice, decent graft, making sure that we can see the division between the scion wood and the rootstock. Then we're also gonna be looking for a nice, straight trunk, so we don't want it to be forked down low. We want one single trunk that we're gonna train up, followed by our branches up top. So we bought the pot, and unfortunately it did not have any drain holes. But if you're gonna have this outside, you have to have a drain hole. So uh, Dr. Kiki is gonna go ahead and drill the second drain hole at the bottom of the pot. Okay. 
So it's as simple as that. If you didn't do that, your plant would actually drown. And I see this a lot, um, especially on store-bought. This was bought at a um, garden, not a garden center, a uh, box store where they sell plenty of decorative pots. Most of them don't have drain holes. So remember, you have to have a good drain hole. So you guys just watched Dr. Ed Bush drill the holes in this pot. And if you notice, these drain holes were pretty large. That's fine. In fact, I like large drain holes because I really want that water to flow out. Some gardeners, however, get a little bit nervous about the soil falling out from the drain holes onto their patios and staining their patios. So there's a couple of tricks you can use. We've seen where a lot of gardeners will take just a sheet or two or three of newspaper and put it at the bottom. Some gardeners have even taken like an old crawfish bag and meshed it up at the bottom. Any of that is okay. The point is you don't wanna use something that doesn't allow water to still escape from the pot. So we don't want you putting plastic bags or visqueen or something like that because you just cut the drain holes in there. We need those drain holes to work. So now that we have the holes drilled in the pot, we want to go ahead and get the pot ready to uh, plant. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to plant, this is a lemon, we're going to plant the lemon into this container. And what we want to do, we want to make sure that the level is about an inch lower than the lip of this pot so that when you water you can have a little bit of water reserve to let it soak down into the container. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take some soil and I'm going to place it in here until that pushes the, this plant up to one inch near the top surface of this pot. And then we're going to take soil, go ahead and fill it around and make sure that there's enough soil to sustain this plant for at least one year. Now one thing you want to do is select a good potting soil. And what we do is, this is garden grow soil. It has macro and micronutrients, that's all the nutrients the plants are going to need and it's actually going to sustain this plant for a year. But we also like to use a little liquid feed about every two months just to give it a little boost for its growth. So remember, you got to get a good soil, good drainage internal. We want to make sure it has good nutrition. It's pH balance with lime. And then we're going to actually take the plant, put it in the soil, partially filled, put the plant there to an inch, and then we're going to plant it. So let's go ahead and plant it. So you can see we've gone ahead and filled this container up about halfway with a good potting mix already. Now the next step of, of planting this tree is going to be to take this, tr this container, this tree out of the container, like so. Really easy to move out. If when you when you have your tree, if you notice the roots are wrapped, like this tree's been in this pot really long time, you wanna detangle it. So I always just kinda take my fingers and just loosen up those roots, and then that's about it. Now, you can see that this container, or this tree is about one inch below the lip of the container. So I'm gonna go ahead now, and I'm gonna fill in the rest of this container with my potting soil. So what you can do is you can just lightly, lightly push in there. You don't want to push and knock all the air out of the soil, but just gently, gently push. And that's about as good as you can do for a good container plant. It's nice and straight. It has a stake. It's healthy. Great graft. It's ready to go. And now we're going to talk a little bit about what to do once it's planted. So when you're potting up the soil, again, in your container, be sure that you're not grouping the soil or mounding the soil near the base of the graft. That's going to cause rot and other problems. So we really want it to be even with the root ball and not mounded at the base of this graft. It's also very important once you're done planting this that you water it within an hour of planting it. So don't go get distracted or plant too many trees up. If you have so much you need to plant, stop what you're doing 
water the first couple of trees that you've planted, then continue planting other trees. So we always wanna water within one hour of planting. The other thing is we wanna keep this moisture maintained in this pot. We don't want the tree drying out and getting too wet and drying out and getting too wet. So try to water your containers at least three times a week. LSU Ag Center typically recommends that we water an inch of water per, an inch per week. But in containers, with their, these trees aren't in the ground, you know, and their moisture wicks away quicker or drains through the bottom of the pot. So we're really gonna water this three times a week and make sure it feels heavy, but doesn't stay saturated. Another thing we wanna do is about every month or two is do buy the instructions a liquid feed. Most people know it as the blue water. So what we wanna do is go ahead and give it a little bit of a boost for growth and we pour it on the plant about every two months and we stop in September because we don't want it to, to get cold damage and we want to make, let it go to sleep, go dormant. Like this year, we had such a cold period. If you had growth, it might have gotten, it might have died. So what we want to do is maintain a good, adequate fertilizer. Another thing you can do is the next year after you're finished planting it in a pot is buy control lease or slow lease fertilizer. You can get it at any store or garden center and apply it once again. On it, it'll tell you if it lasts six months, nine months, or 12 months. So go ahead and apply that and keep it going. And this tree will be producing lemons before you know it. So now that we have the plant in the container, we found that typically a home gardener isn't gonna be able to move all the pots in during a cold spell or move it around to chase the sunlight. So what we, we usually recommend is go ahead and plant in a plant dolly underneath. If you can put the dolly underneath, it can roll easy and we can move it when you need to. And that's really important when it's gonna freeze and you don't wanna lose your plants. It's also really important if you've picked a decorative pot that you really like that's a heavy material, like a terracotta or a stone pot. For some of us, when we're planting this citrus tree, if you didn't pick the ideal location to plant it, now all of a sudden you have a 100 or 200 pound pot and can soil to move. So having that dolly really helps also with you figuring out the best pl um, place on your porch to, to grow this tree. Ideally, six to eight hours of direct sunlight would be best for a citrus tree. Happy gardening!